everyone, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by Soft Labs, What DevOps Is and Why You Should Care, featuring Chris Riley, a seasoned DevOps analyst. Before I, think, before I hand things off to Chris, I wanted to cover a few items. If you experience any technical issues, please submit a question in the Q&A panel and I'll help out. This is also how you can submit questions and we'll answer as many as possible in the Q&A at the end of the hour. Please close any unnecessary applications you have running in the background to help uh, with the bandwidth. Once starting is ready, you'll receive an email with the links to the recording and slides as well, and that should come out tomorrow. All right, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with Chris Riley. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here sitting in the Sauce Labs office in beautiful San Francisco, and I want to first thank Sauce Labs uh, for putting it all on the line and inviting me here um, today to discuss what DevOps is and what it means for QA. Um, also, because they are one of the few vendors out there that are that are covering the broader um, overarching stories in the development space, which are very important. But I also want to thank you guys. The questions that came across in the pre-webinar um, little survey there were just awesome, and I hope we'll try to keep this to 30 minutes so that we can address uh, the vast majority of those. But I also think they'll there'll probably be some pieces of content that come out to address them as well. So a little bit more about me. Um, wait, hold on one second. It looks like I'm on a drawing tool here. All right, there we go. So a little bit more about me. Um, role in the market, uh, well, actually, what I tell people I am is a really bad coder. So if you can't do it, teach. I am an analyst in the DevOps market, and I basically cover anything around the developer tooling, process automation, and so forth. I'm a regular author on DevOps.com, TheNewStack.com, uh, tech target, et cetera, et cetera. And I write on topics that are more what I call strategy tactical. So they are strategy combined with tactics, but not down to uh, code snippets. So what we're going to cover today, uh, we did the introductions, and we do definitions. Uh, I'm going to make the definitions as fun as possible, but they're very important because that is part of the catalyst for this topic, talk about you know what what does this mean now that we've kind of set the uh, level playing field of what DevOps is, what does it mean? What are some of the new challenges that come with DevOps? And then finally, um, getting to the meat of what this topic is about is why should QA care? At the very end, we'll cover the future and some Q and A. So, first, many people, you know, when you're in the weeds and you're, you're you're part of a development shop, you don't really think about the aspects of what DevOps means. And there's really two faces to DevOps. There's DevOps the movement and DevOps the function. Oftentimes, uh, if we're if the technical folks that are deep in the trenches doing this, you're referring to DevOps the function, which is usually a, somebody part of the ops team whose customer is the development shop, and their primary role is infrastructure automation, tools like Chef and Puppet and so forth in managing that. But where all the chatter is happening and where it's getting disruptive and provocative and some people are, are um, really going crazy about the DevOps topic is the movement. And what's different is that it, it's actually quite a bit different. What's different is that the movement includes people, process, and tools. So it's an overarching framework that includes the process automation, but it also focuses on how communication, how the team can work together to improve the pipeline over a long period of time. And the reason that's important is because it's classic in the enterprise 
to have issues with even um, agile processes because a lot of times agile is just really fast waterfall and everything is chunked up and people have their specific roles and it doesn't facilitate a really fast moving continuous process. Now, one of the questions I know that's going to come up immediately is, you know, where's the data about what's going on in the DevOps market? There really is no hard data. Um, even our, our good friends over at Gartner have different opinions within the same research firm about what DevOps is. At the same time, they uh, published an article talking about the fact that DevOps isn't a market. They will have another one uh, recently that tries to quantify it. But the data is not going to help you in any ways. It's leading because we're talking about a framework, and, which means that it's going to be unique to your organization. And, and really, the driving factor is the outcome. Right? All you should care about is the results. So for webinar, we're focused on the movement. Uh, the biggest reason I want to focus on the movement is because it's not often what is thought about. About. Uh, often when I talk to QA professionals, they're referring to their peers in the IT operations department, and they're actually um, not addressing the overall arching DevOps story. And that's what's going to become very important when we look at how QA gets involved. So the rest of the time, I'm mostly talking about the movement until I discuss some of the processes uh, within the movement. So the market is confused. I'm confused, you're confused, everybody is confused. And the reason for this is because there's so many different uh, entry points and perspectives of what DevOps is. The fonts are a little bit small here, but it should be pretty clear what I'm getting at of the DevOps movement. Really, the only people who are looking at the DevOps movement holistically are those who are the early innovators, are those system integrators, and so forth. They're, they're trying to encapsulate every aspect of DevOps. But when you start to look at developers, QA, the vendors in the space, your executive management, and IT ops, you're going to get very different perspectives of what DevOps is. For example, the developer, in many ways, considers DevOps that thing that allows them to get full control. And sometimes, in the extreme form, they're thinking that IT and QA go away, which is not true. It be true for smaller organizations, but the typical development environment, that's not going to be the case. For QA, like I said, DevOps is very often considered that infrastructure thing, uh, and that's how it's perceived. For the vendors in the market, um, they're usually on the cutting edge. Uh, they have a, have a perception that users in the market have already done most of this and are taking the next step. For your executive management, they may be thinking, hey, this, we're doing it. Why aren't we doing it? It's that easy thing that you plop in and you do that. Go get that ops thing and do it. Um, and then you have IT ops which really comes down to type of organization, um, their perception of what DevOps is, but they also are a part of the DevOps function that already exists and has existed for quite some time. Uh, there, uh, well, well, Apple, for example, um, has had DevOps functions a part of each of their application units, and they have, you know, probably, I don't know, it could be hundreds of these that they've been doing for a long time that go through, um, that are a facilitator between the de developers and IT operations. So these perspectives get even more complicated when you start to talk about the organization. And I'm not going to uh, read all of these, but what I will say is that, especially from the IT ops perspective, one of the first things you'll hear is, we've done this, we're already doing it, it's not new, don't call it DevOps, I hate the word DevOps, what's culture? And it's usually driven by uh, 
the technologies around Puppet and Chef and ITIL, which is a good first step in DevOps, but it isn't DevOps because ITIL is focused on governance and control and not so much um, the culture and the release automation and the results part of it. So it's completely, even if it's the same exact technology, it's a completely different mindset. The other thing that I want to point out, it might just be a pet peeve of mine, <laughs> but I think it is important. A lot of time DevOps is compared to the manufacturing assembly line process. And this really isn't true. The reason it's not true, and I think that it's very dangerous, is twofold. The first is, is a manufacturing process, the iteration of improvements is very slow. Somebody in the test portion cannot run over to the person in the design portion and say, hey, you need to fix this and let's change it now so that we can move on with a better product. That doesn't happen. Actually, you'd get fired if you did that. The second part is that it still encourages the chunking of duties, which is not a DevOps environment. Uh, I'm not saying that you don't have individual responsibilities, but in a DevOps environment, everybody has a shared goal. It's all results driven. It's not chunked. Basically, we're in this weird spot right now where the definition of DevOps is evolving. It's going to start moving upstream for the enterprise. And we're in the trough of dis disillusionment where uh, some of the innovators in this space are maybe frustrated that DevOps has kind of become something of its own. And also, um, it's redefining itself for everybody because there's no reason that it should be a members only club. There's no reason that organizations should be locked out. Now, what we do know is that uh, this work is people drive processes and processes that are executed by tools. Some organizations that have just jumped into DevOps think that the tool brings DevOps to your organization. That is not the case. It will never be the case. The tool then will dictate you and is not sustainable. Rather, it's people who create the processes which are uniform. Continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment uh, are all fairly standard in things that organizations can understand from a purely tactical point of view. And those are executed by awesome tools automation tools like Sauce Labs, bring it all together and tie your pipeline into one unified integrated system. The other thing that comes up is this word culture, and this can strike a lot of frustration in the market. Culture does not mean that you have some fancy title and you ride a scooter around in your office and you play ping pong from time to time. What culture means is that you're deliberate. If your organization forces each team to be siloed, that's culture. But you didn't decide. That just happened on its own. What culture means here is that you are deliberate about open communication. And so, deciding what's going to happen versus um, it being for itself. But when it all comes down to it, it has the same goal, really. You don't even need to use the word DevOps. As long as you are all about faster releases at a higher quality, you are eventually going to build a DevOps-looking environment. DevOps or not, that's what's going to happen. Notice, faster releases at a higher quality. So this is a key element in where QA and QA automation tools like Sauce Labs play to bring it all together and DevOps together. However, many of the DevOps enthusiasts may not see it exactly this way. So let's talk about that. First of all, a lot of times environments are driven by this go button. Right? They think we need to get to continuous delivery as fast as possible. We need to be Etsy or Netflix. This go button is great. It drives uh, a lot of innovation and a lot of results. However, 
The problem with the Go button is it forces you to be in the weeds, and especially for development teams who all they care about is their backlog. Right? That's why they get so mad when you introduce a new bug to them because they want to build new functionality and it's backlog, 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 release, release, release. So every thought is tied to a release. It's not tied to the bigger picture. And this creates a new set of challenges. Uh, it maybe is not sustainable. You know, over time, you may be going very fast and, and doing continuous delivery in a very short amount of time with all the great tools out there. Eventually, it falls apart because that one person who knew how to run the infrastructure uh, for example, <laughs> which is why you shouldn't use your own on-prem testing grids, is um, disappears and you don't know what to do. So the big sustainability uh, question. The other thing is, do you know what's going on? Once you release faster, what's happening in the wild? Do you have issues around application sprawl, um, which is a serious problem that a lot of people are not questioning because it's um, just not none, I guess. And the thing that I'm preaching to the choir here, developers often don't realize, is that the more bugs you create, the more bugs you will have. And it's a compounding problem. So if you're going faster, that happens even a more rapid rate. I mean, you've sped up um, the quality, you've sped up the application releases, but you've also sped up the, the potential of issues. So I'm not sure these other issues. So this is where quality comes in. This is where the QA team has a really unique perspective because QA has that holistic point of view that developers don't have. They know every aspect of the application, which means they are in one of the best positions to contribute to the modern software delivery pipeline. But in a lot of organizations, they may not even get the chance. And that's what uh, has to change, and that's what I'm pushing. Because if DevOps is about faster releases at a higher quality, it is QA that's going to come in and give the feedback, suggest um, doing uh, functional test automation in the cloud, suggest the offloading of infrastructure and testing grids from the ops team to the cloud. All of those things that the rest of the team may not have the time or the um, foresight to consider. And the reason you want to do this is maybe eventually and finally, because this is not true in most organizations, you get your own budget. Um, it's no lie, budget is power. And when you need a new tool, you need to be able to go and have autonomy and go and get it. So if you want Sauce Labs tomorrow, you can have it. Um, that's an important thing. Would you get to go and find new tools and vet them and bring them into the team and say, listen, if we use Selenium to automate our functional testing, we're going to be able to focus more time on strategy and you know, get our quality and our results to happen sooner. Also, the reason you should care is just to be ready for what's coming. You know, potentially, I can't say specifically what's going to happen in your organization, but something will happen. Uh, all it takes is an ex one executive to hear about this DevOps thing and say, you know, why aren't we doing this? What, what do we do with this? Um, that changes happen. And it introduces a lot of great opportunities. I'm going to answer one of the questions that came up, which is, have you seen organizations um, take the QA role and convert it to DevOps? I have. I actually have. More frequently, I see people who come from QA um, when they leave an organization, go after a DevOps role. And that is because it's kind of easy for them and it's an upstream um, opportunity to focus more on strategy. That's what the evolution of QA is, is to get to more strategy um, for the development processes. So here's some of the things you can do. You know, the tooling in the market is amazing and it is responsibility to go out and present to the team 
tools like Sauce Labs, like Jenkins, to do automation, to increase the quality, and build a case for why. I know that this does sound fun, and I know also you might be thinking, I want, I'm going to have to deal with infrastructure. But if you think about it, let's take Sauce Labs, for example. You have your IT ops team who's trying to provide you infrastructure. You're a customer of theirs and infrastructure. But in the case of Sauce Labs, by the infrastructure. As a matter of fact, it's just there. You don't know about it. You don't touch it. You don't care because the testing in your test suite just automatically happens. The next thing is deliver your wins. You know, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, you need to point out to the rest of the team, hey, listen, in the last quarter, we used the number of bugs by X. Hey, listen, in the last one month, our pipeline the number of releases we released um, increased by Y. Because at times, organization, nobody's taking the responsibility to do this. So there's no reason for you not to. It may be just as simple as delivering, delivering some analytics. Um, and that's why I believe, I haven't validated, but I believe Sauce Labs invested a lot in a new CI dashboard that gives data. So share that. Share that with the team in a stand-up meeting. Throw it up, pass it around so that people know, well, don't throw up, but throw it up and pass it around so people can see what's going on. Find your spot. Every organization is different, so find out where you fit in the DevOps area. There is this new idea of continuous documentation, and this could be owned, and I know, again, it doesn't sound fun, but continuous documentation is an automatic collection of the processes, the people, the application in your environment. And because it's automatic, it happens on its own. But somebody needs to point out and highlight specific areas. And that could be QA. Um, it, it could be ops, but it could also be QA because ops, unfortunately, doesn't care too much about the application. They care about where it's running and how it's running. Make developers champions. Um, this is this just for the near term. Um, show them how to build better quality in the application. They are not a threat to you. If you think about moving closer and closer to strategy, you are a facilitator of quality. So teach them what it's going to take to build better quality, higher quality applications, which could be some passing observations from one particular developer that you want to share. Suggest improvements to the pipeline itself. Um, in the last webinar, there was an uh, interesting conflict between uh, the survey that we gave where the, the audience said they do or have been or started doing continuous integration. But then later, the majority of the audience also said that they're not doing automated functional testing. So those two do not agree. And what I'm thinking is going on here is that even there is automation, it's probably still manual because the environment is disjoint. So help connect the dots. Realize and leverage your new unique position, a holistic point of view that you can share with the entire team. And automate, automate, automate. You know, some low-hanging fruit. Continuous integration is a safe place to um, create automation. Automate your web application testing. Automate your mobile application testing. Bring it all together uh, and show the power, of, the power of that automation. I'm going to just quickly go over some three examples where um, this is put into practice and very interesting. Acorns is a unique investing application uh, for you know, private individuals to do small investments as a part of a bigger pool. They are in a regulated industry. Um, and if you're familiar with the investing world, it's, it's pretty complex what you have to comply with. Small team, great. However, QA basically drives the entire pipeline at Acorns, and it's awesome. There's a large QA team. It's 100% strategy driven. They suggest tools. They suggest ways, new ways to do things, and it's very cool. Next is Wells Fargo. Uh, I'm a customer of Wells Fargo, and on that side of the house, I'm not a big fan. However, from their IT and development point of view, for their web application and their mobile application, they do something really cool. It's called shared services. I didn't mention earlier, 
is an organization may not have a DevOps t title, but they're still doing DevOps because everybody is DevOps. The entire team is DevOps. So that's kind of what Wells Fargo's shared services is. They are a facilitator between IT and development. They are a library of tools that have been embedded, and they're evangelists of the modern software delivery pipeline. So they go out and learn about new things, new tools, and they help it get executed. Uh, the developers. And finally, constant contact. Uh, the Aircorns, bigger development shop. But what's interesting from them is they've gone from the agile software development shop to the continuous delivery, continuous integration organization. And also, QA is very important to them. Let's talk a little bit about where it's going, you know, some about the future. There's a lot about mobile. You know, we all have to be prepared for mobile. Acorn's the example I gave for uh, before. Almost a year after the original launch, Disney released their web application, which was very recent. At it was all mobile. So mobile is going to be important, which means mobile testing is going to be important. Using tools like Appium, um, and one of the questions coming up: uh, Does Sauce Labs have um, mobile testing? I believe. Believe that's something um, coming soon and, and very exciting. The next thing is you've been hearing a lot about containers, and yep, I'm on that bandwagon. <laughs> um, but I'm I am uh, a little cautious about the whole idea of pipelines being driven containers, mostly because containers today are very new, and they don't have some of the critical elements around um, around and so forth. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do, let's let's take Sauce Labs as an example again, or automated testing tools. You can actually have the containers, uh, which is essentially the application run these tools, and that makes your application essentially autonomous and from a Docker container driving its own testing. It's a very cool, it's a very cool setup, not a very common one yet. Um, I think it will be. Developers are going to be held more accountable. Not only quality, this helps everybody, it really does, especially when you're focusing on strategy because they're going to be asking you for help, um, but also for security. And this, this is a big one, you know. Um, when heart bleed happens, and it's not just your ops team that gets in trouble, it's your developers as well. They, they have a lot more accountability for the security of their code, which given the world of open source tools, this is very important. User-driven test case development. This is something that um, is very opportunistic and, and also very interesting. When you think about strategy, um, you start to think about really cool things like the application starting to build test cases automatically and you have, being able to feed those back into uh, Sauce Labs and then running them. And then what I've already said is QA morphs into quality engineering, and quality evangelist where you're focusing more on st test strategy over via, uh, beyond just the running of test, and that's the majority of your time. So what I want to highlight and, and create some key takeaways uh, for you guys is DevOps has two types, a function and the movement. Always right now is predominantly around the movement. The function has existed for quite a while. And while that function is important and mostly infrastructure related, the movement isn't. And everybody in software development needs to care about the movement. They're, it's unavoidable. And don't let it happen to you. You should happen to it. I believe, and it's been one of my big charters, that QA has a visibility into the DevOps and the pipeline that other people people do not have. And because of that unique visibility, they have an opportunity to provide feedback and data and elements to the development team and the ops team that didn't exist before. So they really have to take that on, own it, and help drive DevOps internally. So you might be saying, um, not my organization. Yeah, something happens in baby steps, but this should be your goal. I have some resources here. There's a ton of resources on, uh, there's a lot of great blog posts on CI, 
on Sotlab's blog, uh, including, of course, um, the last webinar I did with them on CI, which was very good and very informational. Now we get to spend some time on the questions that you produced, uh, both on the ones that were entered uh, at the beginning of the webinar and then um, the ones that Christina is going to call out for me. Um, and actually, you know, before we just do that, I want to quickly answer the Sauce Labs ones that came up that um, that I uh, I can answer. One of them is uh, does Sauce Labs support parallel testing? And and do, uh, and that's going to be all around. Um, which, if you're not familiar with that, um, I know you are familiar with Selenium crashing, and you are familiar with Selenium being slow. Um, parallel testing fixes all. All of that, so it's an uh, important thing. And then the other thing is testing on um, mobile devices, and I believe that that's something that's going to come very soon uh, as well. All right, so now we can do the more general questions. Yeah, we have a few here. Um, uh, when you say user-driven test case development, are you referring to something like BDD? But isn't that a cultural change right from BA, Dev, and QA? Do you have any advice on that? Hmm. Um, I'm going to confess that I don't know what BDD is, but I could Google it really quickly, and that might be embarrassing. Maybe Gina can do it <laughs> for me. But there are a few other things that you mentioned there. Is it a cultural thing? No, actually, that is not. Um, that is not. Uh, <laughs> I'm referring to, and yes, behavior-driven development. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. However, what I'm saying is bridging the gap between log analysis and application performance monitoring to test case. Um, this is can be done manual today, and actually, frankly, it should be, which is, hey, what is the functionality that our users are more most frequently using? Hey, what are the parts on our page the users are lingering. We expect a user to be able to take an action within X number of seconds, but for some reason they're not. Why are they doing it? Now, today you can you can build a test case off of that, right? But what I'm suggesting is that it's also possible to have the test cases built um, directly. Ultra element, mostly you have the organization to agree, but if you're struggling with that, I'm sure you're struggling with uh, many more elements to the move to DevOps. So we have a couple of questions just kind of helping us clarify DevOps a little bit further. Um, DevOps related to agile development um, mm -hmm. process and would East Engineer also be part of DevOps? Mm. So both fantastic questions. Uh, the first one, agile. This also is pretty controversial. I actually have a blog where I got into some, oh no, it was on Quora. I got into a little bit of a tiff on this particular one. You know, the practices of Agile don't go away. You know? um, however, the thing I, I would suggest that we talk about Agile anymore is that because they don't go away, we have this new element, um, sprints, which is the people element in the communication element. Stand-up meetings are great. Yeah, they, they solve, the format is fantastic, but it does not facilitate the type of communication and barrier breakdowns. And so ops is usually not invited to those. Sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're not. Um, so one big difference there. As far as release uh, engineers, uh, more and more, uh, and then actually, there's another question in here that's that's similar to that. More, I don't see organizations when there's a new project hiring release uh, automation and release uh, engineers. But yes, the same thing I see happening with QA is they become DevOps. One of the questions, and as it relates to this, is organizations are not just firing people and getting DevOps. People that that's not I, I very rarely see that happening. I don't see a sub plan. What I see is when there's a new project, a new application, types change. Either ops suddenly becomes DevOps. That's kind of what happened at Apple, um, or they they transition and start hiring DevOps talent um, for the new application instead of replacing existing teams. Okay. Um, who normally writes the test cases for automated testing? Is it test 
group or the development group? Well, the idea, the the uh, uh, the dream pun intended, is that developers write the test cases. Um, that's that's the idea. There is going to be a long transition period. When, like when we talk about CI, development shops that exist today, existing agile shops, are not going to jump to continuous delivery and continuous um, deployment overnight, but can jump into CI, just like the transition of creating the test cases with the developers. And this sounds maybe sounds a little bit scary, but it's actually an opportunity because what I see happening and there are organizations that have mastered this, like Acorns, where the testing team is helping the developers on what to test, where to focus, strategy. And sometimes they're delivering um, overarching uh, time patterns for the development team to say, you are going to test this way. You will test these things. This is the how you're going to integrate testing into your code. Um, but yeah, it's a big transition, and it's going to take time. What do you mean by create user-driven test scripts, and how do you know if you have done it? Also, what metrics, uh, or what are the top three metrics that QA can identify and measure to help dev? Yep. Uh, so the first one I think we addressed when we talked about behavior, behavior-driven uh, development. But again, um, it is is very new, and I did have the fortunate opportunity of working for a company in the Valley who started doing this, leveraging their log analysis system and um, you know some coding to build some simple uh, testing scripts. And it also includes things like perceptual diffs and. and Stuff like that. So it is possible. It is very new. Um, you would you would be doing it very deliberately. So that's how you would know. But you can do it manually um, if you create dashboards in your log analysis system and then produce tests from them. Uh, the second the second question. Uh, what are the three metrics ah, that QA can identify yeah. to help dev? Yeah. Right, right. So one of them is controversial, and you're not going to be able to really um, out of the box provide this. And this is data on a developer level, um, <laughs> the number of bugs, right? Nobody, nobody wants to know, but anytime you're only as fast as your slowest um, developer, or you're only as fast as your um, developer that produces the least amount of bugs. So it's good, to, it's good to have that visibility, and it's going to require you as a K team to get access to the log analysis platforms or the APM, Application Performance Monitoring Platform, um, which does happen in organizations, doesn't happen in others, but to this, you have to have access. Now, beyond that, uh, data around the performance of the pipeline is critical. Also, data that relates to potential issues in the application over a period of time as it relates to the bugs. Because you want to be able to prove that you can push the quality upstream. And you do that by showing that after we made this change, we had more bugs. So let's say the backlog, the number of tickets in the backlog increased by 10%, and we had a 2% increase in bugs. So let's you know, let's release more, but let's let's get control of our backlog or spend some time on our backlog um, intentionally first so that we reduce that. So data around that is very useful, which requires you to go to multiple systems, I understand, but it's going to be very, very helpful. Okay, awesome. Um, next question, does Soft Labs support distributed execution? Distributed execution. Well, this might be a good question by going to support at saucelabs.com, but Sauce Labs, um, or Twitter, Sauce Labs has parallel testing, and Sauce Labs is inherently um, distributed by the nature of, of, you know, under the scenes, Sauce Labs is infrastructure as a service, but to, to you as a tester, it's essentially a platform as a service. You provide your scripts and then, you know, select the configuration you run them on and then run them. But under the scenes, it is distributed. So it's many times faster than you would be able to do in-house, which is a huge opportunity cost, by the way, um, for your operations team. 
I hope that. If I didn't answer that, please go to SASAB support and they will. Thank you. Um, how is the software developer in test or SDET role linked to DevOps? Yeah, so what I said earlier is that you don't have somebody in your organization with the title DevOps to be DevOps. DevOps is a framework. It's a mentality. It means everybody in the group has a shared goal. The goal is more releases at a higher quality. So everybody together is DevOps. And that sounds a little kumbaya-ish, but it's true because the nature, if you're all working on the same team, you're going to get more done. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And sometimes this is an organizational change that comes naturally or comes disruptively um, because some you know, major issue or, or you start net new with brand new applications. But, um, all DevOps. Uh, it's not one individual. Everybody is DevOps, and everybody has to play into that role. Okay, so there's there's no kind of key titles. People are asking if there's key titles. There is, like if I'm in QA, is there titles I would look for mm, um, yeah. as somebody who wants to get into DevOps? Yeah, so they've all been mentioned. Um, okay. QA managers, um, release automation, also, just plain DevOps, but also um, what you see is IT ops individuals, usually called IT managers, whose customers are the developers. And, and actually, this is a great question because those should be your friends. You know, as I talk about all these things that I'm suggesting, you might be saying, "Yeah, Chris, easier said than done." Um, but if you team up with one of these individuals, that is a great point that um, you can get these goals accomplish faster. Thank you. Um, somebody wrote in, I come from a long waterfall development process team. We are doing Agile now, but developers are complaining that it's just fast waterfall like you said <laughs> in this broadcast. <laughs> what we say needs to change this developer mindset? Um, yeah, look, <laughs> I, I actually, I'll be totally honest, all of the Agile shops I've run into are really fast waterfall. I'm, usually what it comes down to, besides the sprints and the storyboarding, which are all fantastic tools, it's just really fast waterfall and it, it encourages silos still and, and so forth. One thing I have to say is that if your development is live application development. So if we're talking about things like SAP and Oracle and SharePoint and you're developing integrations to those, have the spirit of DevOps, but there's a good chance you're not going to be able to move to DevOps because you're hindered by those applications. Otherwise, um, you've taken the fact that you've moved to Agile is a great sign. It means that you're opportunistic and you are ready to go and you're going to do it. The best way is to do something like continuous integration. And start to build continuous integration sandboxes and labs. So, and sign up for Sauce Labs tomorrow and run five tests on something, anything. And take a screenshot, download the dashboard, share it with your team. That is a good step. It's going to take you time. But you need to become an evangelist of quality. And you need to start helping the developers do the cool, the cool things. Um, and you need to agree with your developers. It is really fast waterfall. Ask them what they want. Uh, IT doesn't realize that shadow IT is actually a roadmap for the things you should be doing. And developers are the most guilty of shadow IT. So ask them, what tools are you using? And then try to bring those tools to the entire environment. No, um, and, and maybe you answered this, but are there any specific tools that help to create dev, DevOps framework and process? Yeah. So I'm going to reiterate before I answer that question is that the tools do not make DevOps ever. Um, if you bring a new tool and say, we are now DevOps because we have X, um, and eventually X, you're not, a develop, you're not a DevOps shop, you're an X shop, okay? Um, but yes, and you need to have the entire suite. And what I call it is the DevOps stack. And the DevOps stack um, includes continuous integration always. Maybe deployment or delivery, but it always includes continuous integration. It always includes a metric tool, a log analysis tool, 
Um, it always includes a unit system and functional testing tool, functional testing like soft labs. Um, because let's be honest, if you're trying to control this infrastructure on your own, that that's going to be a huge variable and a huge pivot that is going to cause you all sorts of problems. So, um, you know, you need pipeline management. And the way you think about release automation tools, there's tons of great ones out there, but they're just workflow tools. That's all they are. They're process automation, they're workflow tools. They're not continuous delivery and continuous integration tools. They allow you to execute them. All of them provide great data and give you a picture into your entire pipeline. And so things like the new CI dashboard and Sauce Labs and Jenkins and Go and all of these things that give you full visibility into the pipeline are fantastic tools and you need to use. And I think it's hard for me to imagine a DevOps environment without at least those three components, um, but there's others. Great. And who do you believe should decide um, what the right platform and tools and infrastructure is for the organization, and then who manages those? Yeah. Well, that's a key question. So um, in organizations that have adopted the concept of shared services, uh, I like the idea of them kind of having that oversight and, and running everything. And, and I see QA transitioning into that role, frankly, um, shared services, whatever you want to call it, DevOps. Um, as far as the tool specifically, uh, maybe I'll answer it with an issue. Often IT controls log analysis. This is a big mistake. Because without giving everybody visibility into what's going on, then there is no way to improve. Data drives everything. And so I think log analysis is a shared ownership between QA and IT ops and DevOps. Uh, as far as the other applications, you know, it would be great if the integration CI environment, the CI environment, and the CI tools, so like Sauce Labs, um, uh, whatever you're using for CI, is controlled by QA. So it's not one or the other, but again, all of you are DevOps. So if you run into a situation where a group is saying, you know, no, 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 this is this is our tool, the only reason that is relevant is in a governance scenario, like you're in healthcare, you're in financial services, and you, by law, have to be very strict about who sees what. Otherwise, that's just a symptom of fiefdoms, and it is not DevOps. Great. Um, most of the time, DevOps is related to cutting down the TTM or the time to market. How is that related to the lean QA trend, or how do you think it will fit in? Lean QA? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's one or the other, actually. I think the, the evolution of all of these, are, it, it's part of the changing definition. I think I'm going to give you a politician answer here. <laughs> uh, it, it's all changing. It, it, elements of each can be brought in together, and you don't have to stop with any of these initiatives because it doesn't preclude you from being DevOps um, because they all are about the same thing, more releases at a higher quality. More releases to have more releases would be very frequently is a huge problem. Um, neglecting the higher quality component of that equation is a huge problem. And so anything that points you in the direction of maintaining quality but improving, I mean, if you're not getting better, then, then you know, what's the point of making any sort of innovation change? Like um, all the tools, uh, some of the tools out there, are you just webifying a bad product? Don't webify a bad process. Don't speed up a bad process. Improve. So Lean QA is a part of that improvement and all plays together. Great. Do any of the uh, other ones you wanted to? You know, I um, um, actually, so what is the most common myth about uh, DevOps? And I think that the um, common myth is from the top-down perspective is that it just is, you know, it just happens on its own and it doesn't take people to make it happen. Um, this is why QA stands to be a part of that. Um, but because of that, in the extreme case, organizations 
options making layoffs and, and downsizing when they already think the automation is there and then the problem happens later, uh, which is a big issue. The other thing is that the myth is that um, DevOps is only infrastructure. It's not. Um, it's it's all, it's all the things around uh, more releases at a higher quality. Um, actually, I think everything else, which is great, the answer. I think we did some some great Q and A. Um, thank you so much, Chris, for joining us, and thanks everyone on the line. Um, I will be sending out the recording and slides by tomorrow, so take a look for that. Thank you. Thank you so much.